What's something that's not a cult, but feels like a cult? Sales floor. No, I don't want to build a community. Go hiking or join a hundred online classes to learn the basics. Make a couple of well-explained to the point training videos for fuck's sake. Maybe 10 to 12 years ago, I went to an alumni event for a friend's college and sat next to a guy who worked for Salesforce. I know this because that's how he introduced himself. When I asked what Salesforce was, because it was the early days, he was visibly shocked and just said, I work for Salesforce. Everybody wants to work for Salesforce. Still not quite sure what it does, despite being surrounded by Salesforce offices, but whenever I see an employee walking around with a Salesforce logo, backpack, or hoodie, I whisper, Everybody wants to work for Salesforce. The Herbalife organization. They were charged with being a pyramid scheme, but they still operate in a similar way. There are several people I grew up with who became hooked on it, and they definitely act like they're in a cult. I know a family that has been part of Herbalife for as long as even their kids can remember. Here's the thing. The mom is a high-level partner and makes a killing now. She doesn't have to lift a finger and sometimes earns 8k a month. These things hook you in because it's easy to essentially rub shoulders with those making really good money, so it makes their lifestyle seem in reach. I thought I could do it until I realized I would literally have to devote my life to it. That means losing all your friends and family who are not involved and only devoting it to getting people you don't really know involved and they will become your circle. Herbalife will be your circle. Herbalife will be your life. Multi-level marketings, but especially Mary Kay. I went to a convention once as the guest of a consultant because she was trying to get me to join. It was very Stepford. Also, she didn't tell me you were expected to dress up, so I showed up in jeans and a hoodie. Peloton. Seriously, my dad hasn't stopped talking about his since getting it a year ago, and went so far as to buy me one for Xmas this year, which is super generous and my fat ass will totally benefit, but feels like I'm being indoctrinated into something. The instructors are really intense and say culty things. I think the idea is to physically torture you to the point that you don't notice you're being programmed to spread Peloton gospel to anyone who will listen. I've been so bored that joining a cult where I get hotter sounds okay though. The Holy Church of CrossFit I'm a member of the not quite as well known Church of Orange Theory. If you ask about proper rowing technique, we'll start chanting at you, legs, core, arms, arms, core, legs. Rowing is 60% leg drive, power, patience, patience. When I first joined 2.5 years ago, I came home with my little folder of information and coupons to local businesses a tote bag, a car magnet, and the heart rate monitor, and said to my husband, I think I just joined a cult. Some workplaces, the ones that push the, we're all family here, attitude, especially. I worked in a place that tried to convince the employees we were a family. They basically meant that they would abuse you and expect you to take it because family. They actively discourage current employees from socializing with former employees. If an employee left because he was fired, it was because he was a bad example to the others and had to be excised from the group. If an employee left because he got fed up and quit, it was because he was a bad apple anyway, but they had non-legitimate reasons to fire him yet. Either way, that informer employee is no longer one of us and should be avoided at all costs. One employee was chastised for liking too many of a former employee's Facebook posts. Four school songs that talk about being a part of the school forever. I just went through at least two dozen top replies and was shocked Burning Man is enlisted. Y'all burners are fucking weird. Source, I was one slash am one who has critical thoughts about how things work, yet have found ideas are only cool if you're popular. This is fascinating. I've wanted to go for a long time, for the music and art but could not stand the vibe people got about it who went. I remember friends going and suddenly totally changed their friend group and a friend saying, he's cool, he's a burner. It's really sad to me though. I'm a lover of less commercial electronic music and would love to see the amazing art and cars, but I feel like I'd find the burners the most exhausting aspect. 
only really because they preach being yourself, and yet they all kind of look slash act the same. Working for a nonprofit, they tend to refer to employees as a family working for a cause, which wouldn't be culty on its own, but they definitely use it to manipulate the employees to working themselves half to death, and set a culture where boundaries are thoughts of not being as invested in the mission. They also use your passion for the mission to justify working you harder slash paying you less. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my job and what I get to do, but I'm old enough to see what's been done to me over the years. The rotating door of young employees who I work to burn out and replace though, I feel bad for. It's a hard lesson to learn. Texas A&M University In high school, I made a presentation on the traditions at A&M. I covered as many traditions as I could find. My mom went there, my uncles went there, my granddad went there, so early on in life, I knew I was going to go there. Right after I finished, someone said, that sounds like a cult. Eating disorders and any pro eating disorder sites. Those who have an eating disorder often view their disorder as their best friend, giving them names like Anna and Mia, and then there are those sites to make it worse. They treat eating disorders like they are sacred and often post rules in a cultish way. One site I used to visit in my dark days even had the Ten Commandments of Anna. Now if that doesn't sound cultish, I don't know what does. Don't even make me start about the weight loss coaches on there. Essential oils. We get it, you're a single mom and you want to work from home. But damn, you guys sure drank the Kool-Aid. The Order of the Arrow and the Boy Scouts. Technically an approved organization, but it's cultish as hell. It's funny, because they make you do this big induction camp out, and then the day after I got back from mine, my English teacher gave me a lecture on how to identify a cult, and it hit a lot of red flags. I have lived in Pennsylvania my entire life, and it would be hard to convince me that Penn State is not a cult. If you listen to people who have graduated Penn State, you'd know. No other college is as good as Penn State. No other college has sports like Penn State. No other colleges teach subjects like Penn State. No other college has a building like Penn State. No other college allows their students to use a library like Penn State. No other colleges let their students use the bathroom like Penn State. No other college has a roof that stops rain like Penn State. No other college allows students to walk down the sidewalk like Penn State. And if any other college has anything, you bet your ass Penn State has it at least twice as good. I hate college pride and Penn State gets the most of it in my area. People who own Thermomix machines spend that much time on an over elaborate food processor and I guess you need to double down, but man, they just won't shut the fuck up about how it changed their life. Oh, cooking is so different for me now. It's just so convenient. Having said that, I did once go to a Thermomix party where they try to mindwash you into their not a cult because the lady that invited me was recently divorced and pretty hot, and I figured, why not give it a shot? I never particularly liked her ex-husband, so could have been a multi-bird stone throw. I barely made it out alive, with my wallet being lightened a couple grand. Man, the sales pressure was intense. Some families. If you're inside the family, you are accepted no matter what, and you don't question anything. If you're outside the family, you are treated politely but don't really matter much unless you act as a part of the family. If you were part of the family, but betray them, you are excommunicated and they spread lies about you. Marching bands. If you know, you know. One thing that still blows my mind to this day is that people pay thousands of dollars to be in drum corps bands. So many questions when I first learned about it. Oh, so it's like being in an orchestra where it's your job to play and be the best in the world? Nope, you pay them actually. Oh well, at least you'll be basically famous, or at least really well known for playing that instrument. Nope, the only people who even know the name of your corpse, or even what drum and bubble corpse, is in general, and are other corpse members, their family, or high school marching band kids and their teachers. My brother-in-law is an American and when he married my sister and moved to Canada, he eventually settled on becoming a music teacher. He was extremely confused at first 
to learn that we give zero shits about marching bands up here. They practically don't exist. Both of his brothers are also music teachers in the US and have marching bands. The programs and classes he's created for the high schools he works at are amazing. He's helped to craft probably the best music program I've seen outside of specialized schools. But he's still occasionally cranky about the fact that marching bands are not a thing up here. His obsession with them is a little unsettling. Disney If you've ever known anyone who has worked at Disneyland, they will talk your ear off about how it's the happiest place on earth and how lucky you are to work there. Well, pre-pandemic. I worked with someone who used to work at Disney. Every third sentence out of her mouth was, well, at Disney, we... Her desk was piled high with Disney cartoon dolls, and she took Fox fur covered notebooks to meetings and wrote in them with these long pens with fluffy, brightly covered tufts at the end. She also dressed a little extra on the set of A Little House on the Prairie, iffy behavior for a 20-something, but this woman was 57 years old. I already had a lot of problems with Disney. That kind of put the final nail in the coffin. A few years ago, my sister introduced me to a new church. I forgot what it was called. Anyways, once I came inside, I realized it was weird the moment I came in. First, they asked for my email address near the entrance, which would have been weird on its own, but after a few minutes of preaching weirdness ensued, there were a lot of people praying loudly, hollering how great Jesus was. Some people were praying on the bare floor. I don't even know how to describe this. Even my sister joined in. Once it was over, I drove home, feeling a bit creeped out. I only went there once, and I'm not planning on coming back anytime soon. I don't know about other churches, but this one was in a word, bizarre. Anyone remember Tumblr before it got sold and they banned the porn? That shit was scary. Dashcon, Mish Apocalypse, Always Reblog, The MC Army, Dan and Phil, Super Wallach, in general, the Homestuck vs. Italia Wars, sending death threats to people who shipped your NOTP, the girl who made jewelry out of grave rob bones, I could go on. Anti-vaxxers. I guess a lot of the new age stuff closely resembles or has all of what it takes to fall under the category of a cult. Def Echar Toli, Saj Huru, and Deepak Chopra crap could be considered cult-like. And of course, Osho. Wine Moms. The stereotype popped up somewhere in the last 10 years. It seems to equate the follies of motherhood with the need for wine. There's memes, shirts, stickers, cups, mom's sippy cup, wink wink. It's just bizarre. But here I am, clicking the upvote n slash or like button because I am afraid to tell people I don't drink wine at all, ever. Moms that hang out exclusively with other moms, walking their toddlers, sitting around the playground, talking about baby related stuff. Agreed. I wanted to socialize with the spouses of my husband's coworkers so we could be comfortable at social events and maybe make some good friends. As soon as they found out we don't have kids, I was excluded from conversations and was on the receiving ends of comments like, oh, you wouldn't understand, you don't have kids, etc. multiple times. Some of them made plans to meet in front of me and didn't make eye contact with me or acknowledge when I said, oh, that sounds fun. And ultimately, I just faded away. It was sad because I felt like we shared other interests, but not having a functional baby maker booted me out of the club. Craft slash bourbon. Was big into craft beers in the beginning of 2010s, by the middle of it, all the fanboy crap and having to hate people who drink macro and over the top flavors and dumb names just fucking wore me out and I bailed. Drink what you want and more importantly, don't judge others for what they drink. Such petulant child bullshit. Hockey in Canada. Rep hockey makes people pay hundreds of dollars just to try out full well knowing there is no shot in hell of making the team. If you do make it, you have to dedicate your life to it and do the same as a parent of a said player. And there is a belief that one day your son will make the NHL or be on Team Canada for female players. Those that do not make the rep hockey continue to play lower level hockey with the hope that they will be called up or make it next year. The amount of abuse hurdles at teenage hockey refs by players, coaches, and parents is nuts. 
Multiple junior leagues are being investigated for widespread abuse of players. Hazing has left players with severe trauma, and racism is beyond what you can imagine. And it's a sport for the elite because you need to pay money to pay for hockey, or make yourself be broke to support hockey. The belief is that a $300 hockey stick or $1,000 skates will make your kid better, just adds fuel to this fire. Anything with anonymous in the name. Lord have mercy. That is some serious cult shit. Been there, done that, told them they were full of shit, and it was basically a religious cult, and actually turned over a staff to realize that there was more than one way to roam, so to speak. The Super Smash Bros. series fandom. Seriously, as a fan of the series, I still can't get over how dedicated and obsessed many of the fans are with the series. I know this can happen with any video game series, but they seem to be on another level. Some of them have literally every movement and technique memorized with every character in every game of the series, and even memorized how those characters progressed and which stages they excel on. Look into the best SSB players in the world, regardless of which game of the series, they have it down to a science. They actually know when to hit and when to dodge, etc based on the exact damage percentage of each character for each game, and some of them have been playing the first game for 21 consecutive years just to master every single movement and square inch of the game. The craziest form of dedication is when they play the longest one player modes without taking 1% of damage with every character in the series. I just can't, like how? Beyonce followers and seemingly the way she thinks about herself. At least from the outside looking in, her achievements make zero sense to me. Nothing about what she does is groundbreaking. There is just a cult of personality surrounding her that makes her mediocre music into some sort of borderline religious experience for her weird fans. Zumba. I don't know what is happening over there, but I did a training to become a certified instructor and people's enthusiasm and loyalty to the brand is insane. Don't get me wrong. I love doing it and teaching Zumba, but there are people who live and breathe the brand and believe its leaders can do no wrong. I had to leave Zumba Instructor's Facebook group because the culty aspect was horrifying me. People would be shouted down just for suggesting that maybe the monthly membership fee should be reduced during the pandemic. The diehard Brexiters. If they're not declaring that Nigel Farage deserves a knighthood, they're lambing off about World War II the 66 World Cup, or something else equally ridiculous. If you argue with their basis claims, you're a sore loser, remoaner. Can be spotted from the sheer amount of British and or English flags in their Twitter usernames. It's a bit fringe, but there's a website called Boob or Bust. You put in your measurements and it gives you your supposed correct bra size. The idea is that shops that offer bra fittings are doing it incorrectly and their sizings will give you a much better fitting bra. They don't sell the bras, at least they didn't a few years back when I tried them, and they don't charge for their service, so on the face, it's pretty innocent and fine. Long story short, their sizing was way off for me, so I emailed asking for advice, and they told me to post photos into their Facebook group for a fit check. So off I went and joined their Facebook group. Instantly, I noticed that unless you were praising boob or bust, your post was bombarded with comments about how you'd done something wrong. Still, I posted mine and hoped for something constructive. I was told I clearly didn't know how to take measurements, that the bra I bought was too small because I had rolls of back fat. My issue was that the bra was comically large on me, and I was upwards of 300 pounds at the time, so my back rolls had nothing to do with the bra. That I needed to learn how to put on a bra properly? This bra was enormous on me, no fancy way of putting it on was going to save it. It was all just very weird, and none of the people commenting were part of the company. They were just diehard fans, I guess. I left the group with my tail between my back rolls, but a couple of years later, I was recounting my unpleasant experience in another Facebook group, and out pops a representative for Boober Bust. She said she'd found my post in the group, and that I was lying about the comments. Why? and also that I'd clearly done something wrong to get such a bad fit. It was all just very weird and uncomfortable, and I really don't know what they get from it, because it's a free service, 
but their reps really get into the culty vibe. 